For what purpose does the gentleman from Arkansas seek recognition? Madam Speaker, I seek unanimous consent to address the House for one minute. Without objection, the gentleman is recognized for one minute. Madam Speaker, I rise today to pay tribute to a dedicated public servant, a respected businessman, a decorated combat veteran, and a trusted mentor, former 3rd District of Arkansas Representative John Paul Hammerschmidt, who passed away on April the 1st at the age of 92. John Paul believed that we are all put on earth to serve others. This principle guided him even from an early age. After graduating from Harrison High School at 15 and spending a year at the Citadel, he forewent West Point and instead joined the Army Air Corps. As a second lieutenant during World War II, he piloted an incredible 217 combat missions and earned multiple medals and decorations. After the war, he returned to his home in Harrison to run the family lumber business, and he continued his service as a member of the U.S. Air Force Reserve until 1960. It was during this time that he also became engaged with local politics, and in 1966, he became the first Republican in 93 years to have been elected to serve Arkansas in the U.S. House of Representatives. During his 26-year tenure in Congress, John Paul never spent a single day in the majority, but he didn't let that stand in the way of serving his constituents to the best of his ability. He worked with all colleagues, Democrat and Republican alike, to our state's benefit and is responsible for bringing the critical transportation infrastructure to Northwest Arkansas that enabled its explosive growth. However, he will truly be remembered for defining the gold standard of constituent service. Simply put, no one did it better than John Paul. Every day he prayed to our Lord for the strength to overcome pride and self-concern in order to always be mindful of the needs of others. Looking back on his life, I would say he was blessed with just that, and for it, our state and our nation will be forever grateful to him for his service. Madam Speaker, on Saturday, John Paul Hammerschmidt will be laid to rest, and he's, as we prepare to say our final goodbyes, I would ask for a moment of silence to honor one of the finest examples of statesmen this chamber has ever seen. Rest in peace, John Paul, and I yield back the balance of my time. Okay. Purpose does the gentleman from Arkansas seek recognition? Without objection, the gentleman is recognized for one minute. Thank you, Madam Speaker. John Paul Hammersmith was truly a visionary champion for Arkansas's conservative values in Congress, but we will all remember him for his humble dedication to our country and to our state. His leadership inspired new generations of Arkansans, including all of us rising today to honor his memory. A supremely successful ambassador for his district and, in fact, the entire state, John Paul helped build the airport and interstates that allowed Northwest Arkansas to blossom into the success story it is today. Ten years ago, John Paul said, we are all put on earth to serve others, and being a congressman gives you a lot of leverage to really serve a lot of people. Congressman Hammerschmidt truly embodied the spirit of public service, and his legacy is a powerful reminder for all public servants of why we're here and who we represent. Yield back. For what, for what purpose does the gentleman from Arkansas seek recognition? Without objection, the gentleman is recognized for one minute. Madam Speaker, I rise tonight to honor the life and legacy of one of Arkansas's great leaders, my friend, former Congressman John Paul Hammerschmidt. For the past three decades, I've known and admired Congressman Hammerschmidt and have long respected his commitment to public service. One of his most important actions was his legislation that made the Buffalo River the country's first national river ensuring its preservation and protection of that extraordinary treasure designed by God's own hand. 
Before John Paul's engagement, the Buffalo had been slated for a Corps of Engineers dam project, which would have destroyed the natural majesty that generations of Arkansans continue to enjoy. Arkansas's wilderness advocate and poet Bill Coleman captures the area's mystique. Giant bluffs rise like medieval castles above this ancient river, sending us back to a time when all of our land was wild. Congressman Hammerschmidt also served as a freshman congressman with my former boss, President George Herbert Walker Bush. And these two great men became fast friends from their time in the Air Force through being freshmen in this great body together. They were close political allies, and Congressman Hammerschmidt was quick to support President Bush in all of his presidential runs. The two men shared victories, defeats, joys, and sorrows throughout their great decades of personal friendship. President Bush once said of John Paul, he did something I could never do, beat Bill Clinton. I'm humbled to have the opportunity to know and learn so much from Congressman Hammerschmidt. He will be greatly missed, and I yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman yields back. For what purpose does the gentleman from Arkansas seek recognition? Without objection, the gentleman is recognized for one minute. Madam Speaker, Congressman John Paul Hammersmith began his service in a member of this body from my home state of Arkansas in 1967, the year that I was born. And he did so for 12 terms, long enough for me to grow up, graduate from college, get a job, and get married. His love for Arkansas and America was evident in his service. He was a champion for his district and our state. He was a tireless advocate for all his constituents on both sides of the aisle and worked hardest to do what was right for the citizens of Arkansas. He served his country and fellow man with honor both in the military and in Congress, leaving a lasting legacy and setting the bar high for those of us who follow him in service. Congressman Hammersmith was from the beautiful Ozark Hills, and many times the people of Arkansas and America were blessed by the leadership of a gentleman from the hills who served his creator by serving others. As we remember his service, may we all continue to look to the hills and be comforted by the words of the psalmist who wrote, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber or sleep. The Lord is thy keeper, the Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil, he shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth, and even forevermore. I yield back my time.